Hi folks, so as I return from my two week holiday, I thought I might get back into gear with a desktop tour video. Now, according to my channel page, it's been four months since I last did a desktop tour video and that was of the Manjaro KDE desktop back when I had that installed on this desktop machine here. Now I have used uh, various different uh, Linux distributions since then, but I have since arrived at Manjaro XFCE distribution. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my choice there. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about some of the distributions that I tried in my uh, in my sort of exploration phase. Uh, but I am no longer going to be distro hopping on this machine as much as I thought I would. Um, I thought that I might try and change up some of the content on this channel. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in this video as well. But I think now, you know, after I've checked out all of the distributions, I've got to say, having you know looked at the various distributions there's not really the world of difference in these distributions at the to the end user at the end of the day once you've customized it once you've got a theme that you like once you've got a workflow that you like once you've got your apps that you like at the end of the day most people will end up with the same or similar distribution the biggest differences will be things like package management uh how you know the release cycle of you know of the packages for example you're going to go with a six monthly cycle rolling release or long-term support release that gets released every couple of years um and then what uh, what packages on top of that you can use flat packs or snaps because at the, at the end of the day you could have an arch based distribution you could have an ubuntu based distribution but if most of your applications are just from uh from flat um from flat packs then the, you've got a very very similar uh distribution a very similar um uh computer at the end of the day so uh, I, I think that when it comes to uh, how I have, have hopped around, I decided to come back to Manjaro because it is one of those distributions that's, well, built by the community for the community. It's a community-centric distribution. It's got a very strong community around it. And um, because of that, the distribution, the default set, all that kind of stuff, uh, the documentation it behaves the way that you expect it to it's not necessarily done to attract new users it's done to satisfy the users that they've already got this it's done for the community so you don't necessarily get all of the most super user friendly features there because if they don't support the existing community then they're probably not going to be enthusiastically embraced by the same community there so it's going to be the community is going to be uh you know uh, a, or the distribution is going to be a reflection of the community and i actually kind of like that reflection there as well because again i don't necessarily need all these bells and whistles to make like my life easier i know exactly what to do or what applications to install to do that um i just want to have something straightforward and something that just behaves the way that I expect that's reasonably up to date it doesn't have to be absolutely cutting edge but considering that I've got a decent graphics card considering I've got a decent processor and a decent amount of memory it makes sense to have the latest versions or reasonably new versions of software so that's why I'm leaning towards a rolling release rather than a uh, long-term support release if I was on a um uh, a machine that was was not as new as this one is or wasn't as high performance as this one is then i would probably go for the more long-term support low maintenance uh type of machine and also i don't know if i would have more than one machine with a rolling release especially something like uh, arch based because that's a lot of updates to download and install and you can break builds from time to time so to have a uh, so i you know it makes sense to tend to lean towards uh, long-term support releases if stability and low maintenance were your priorities here they're not on this machine uh, i like to have you know reasonably up-to-date nvidia graphics reason reasonably up-to-date kernel i like the kernel management utilities that come with manjaro as well i think if we actually hop into here and i can show you down uh da -da -da -da. manjaro system settings here uh with the kernel and then it gives you all of the kernels that are available to you. So I've got the um, LTS kernel that is running, so 4.14. But um, I can run something a bit newer. I can go up to uh, 4.18.12-1. So, um, and you get to install, you get to remove them as you wish. It's very user-friendly, very straightforward. So it's not going to be something that's necessarily going to be interesting to newcomers or what version of the kernel they're running they're just going to want something that works but if you're running a gaming rig for example you're probably going to have some kind of interest in which kernel you're running especially if you're running particularly new hardware now fortunately enough uh the kernel that i've got now is doing quite well for me but if it wasn't i'd have plenty of choice there as well so
this is what I mean by it's built by the community for the community. Uh, if it's not built for every single person on the planet, it's not designed for someone who can barely use a computer. You need to be able to read through documentation. You're going to need to understand what certain terms mean. But once you have a you know the basic knowledge of how a Linux distribution is put together, I think Manjaro is a really strong candidate for a lot of people because, again, it's just intuitive. It's not idiot proof. Um, it's it's not completely 100% locked down, super stable all the time. But it behaves, it's intuitive, it behaves the way that you expect it to, um, for the, or at least certainly for the most most cases. Uh, some people have reported with Manjaro that they have some issues when it comes to uh, prod, uh, packages from the AUR not always playing nice because Manjaro is a step behind the arch cycle. Uh, i got to say, that's not necessarily an issue that I've ever had. However, I on this particular install of Manjaro, I actually have zero packages from the AUR running. I actually have no packages from the AUR running. So anyway, uh, let's get into some of the uh, parts of the, the the review here, parts of the system that I'm going to be taking a look at here. But the reason I'm doing this desktop tour today is because I'm probably not going to be bouncing around my desk, uh, my um, distributions very much from here on in. So I tried Pop OS, which is based on Ubuntu. I really quite liked that. That was really quite nice. Um, it looked nice. It was smooth. It was you know something that I, I really quite liked from 76 uh, the, there's no real reason why I, I moved on from that I would have been perfectly happy with an Ubuntu based build um, and uh, again of course I quite enjoyed that then I tried Solus Solus was really quite good as well actually it's a rolling release it's completely independent and um, in many ways it's almost like I am how I imagined the windows that people want to look like in with, with Solus it it kind of has a fee a, a windowsy feel about it but the kind of windows that people wished existed it uh, so it it is a rolling distribution so you don't have to worry about release cycles all that kind of stuff with a focus on stability uh, and and uh, it's there are plenty of people who who have watched my videos in the past, and they completely sing Solus's praises in regards to that having you know very uh, you know builds that, that stay on the machine forever, and um, so it's the lowest maintenance, most up to date. It's the best balance, I think, when it comes to what Windows users are looking at. Now there'll be some Windows users, of course, that want an LTS. They want the lowest maintenance, most stability uh, possible. Once they've got something that works, they really only want to want security updates ad infinitum. Really, at that stage, so um, so because in in my mind, it does beg beg the question, just as a tangent, that there might be a space for a distribution that gets you know is released once every five years or something like that, but. Um, uh, and just have security updates. I think the vanilla Ubuntu and Linux Mint do have five year, uh, if I'm not mistaken, five year support cycle. So I suppose if you technically, you technically were able to, to to upgrade a system once every four or five years with Linux Mint. But I guess you know, considering how many people are getting concerns that Windows Seven will be running out of um, support soon. Uh, that has a lot of people um, concerned, and 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 Windows Seven is a pretty old dis um, operating system at this stage as well. So anyway, let's uh, crack on. I'll give you a bit of a tour of the Manjaro uh, with Manjaro XFCE. Now I chose XFCE because XFCE is desktop is just it's very traditional. It's minimalist. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you don't necessarily need. I kind of like that. It's just a bit more slim in that regard. I like KDE. You could slim KDE Plasma right down as well. I'd certainly be very happy back on that. But I just wanted to give XFCE a go because it's a bit old school, and I like the old school charm that XFCE brings. It's it's very similar in terms of its paradigm to how I learned to use GUI uh, desktop environments particularly even back from my Windows 95 days it still has that that certain reminiscence there and I like the beveled edge themes uh, and I actually you guys may have noticed I've actually got the traditional theme here the theme that comes with Manjaro XFCE there are a few more to choose from and I can actually go into appearances so I got vertex may here I think breath and breath dark might be newer ones or um, and there are vertex lights there's vertex dark the dark themes do actually look really quite nice you've even got some xfce classics down here and I quite like the older style themes as well so uh, I, I'm very happy at home with xfce I quite like mate as well personally I do often opt towards the desktop environment that is you know the the flagship desktop environment for a distribution a lot of the time it's often the one where they've put the most amount of work in to it but when it comes to something as um 
as 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 malleable as a, a Manjaro distribution or as an Arch based distribution, you can do almost anything you want with almost any desktop environment. You you pretty much have a free reign of your your desktop environments here, uh, in that regard as well. And if you you know if you want to set a desktop environment up a very specific way, you've of course got the the terminal command line installed as well. So uh, the background wallpaper I've got comes from. Uh, the public domain, so it's abandoned forest here. I've, I, I keep a few um, around, I think. Uh, yes, here we go. So I just, if you type in railroad forest into Pexels, uh, you will have. Um, it's quite a good. It's quite a lot of good, uh, good wallpaper, uh, good wallpapers on Pexels there. So. Um, yeah, definitely worth checking them out. So, uh, but that's where I got uh, I got this one. This one's actually quite an old one, one I've had for quite a while. Uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, I quite like the the flat icon theme as well. It goes very well with the slightly old school uh, look. But as you can see, the windows here. Yeah, see, it looks it's not flat like a lot of the the modern uh, GTK themes. They're trying to be a bit more flat now to uh, to give that kind of more modern. Uh, look, which is, is kind of good and all. Uh, okay, so this is my terminal. I think I might have tweaked the colors on this terminal. I kind of like the, the dark background on terminals. Uh, let's do Neo Fetch to see what's what. So, uh, what have we got here? Terminal font, monospace 12. Um, I could try and track down maybe a different uh, different terminal font from time to time as well. So there you can see my uh, my resolution. Yes, I'm on a 1440 by 900 monitor. Uh, the uptime, although that's only one and a half hours uh, with my uptime, that's because I recently rebooted from an upload. I've got 27 uh, flat packs there among 1025 Pac-Man packages. As you can see here, I've got the AX370 Gaming 5 motherboard if that means anything to anyone and as you can see here I've got the AMD Ryzen 7 1700 uh, 16 core with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970 graphics card and if you want to have a look at the flat packs that I have listed here so there we go that is the list of flat packs you've got to love the li the uh, flat pack list command you just get to it you know flat pack is just such an easy um, way to manipulate packages just from the command line as well I know that a lot of people just the sheer glimpse of a command line is, is horrifying but I must say when it comes to trying to work um, how each distribution has its own way of integrating flat packs into their GUI storefront or their uh, their application manager it's the same on the command line wherever you go. It's the same set of commands. It's the same workflow. It's fantastic. So as you can see here, I got sync thing GTK. I got OBS. Now when it comes to OBS, I actually have multimedia here. I've got the flat pack version and I've got the native version for Manjaro there as well. Both of them work really quite well. But if one fails on me, it's just nice to have a backup. Um, so I got sync thing OBS. I got RSS guard. That is not the RSS. Uh, reader that I tend to use. I think it's Liferia is the one that I tend to use these days, but I'll keep a few around. Uh, gnome boxes. The gnome password safe is not that bad actually. I'm, I um, password safe. There we go. So I've got um, some passwords there. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be logging in right now, but this password safe, which uses the KeyPass uh, database format, uh, actually is not too bad if you want a GTK based password manager, because of course, KeyPass X and KeyPass XC are QT based. As you can see, I've got them installed here on the flat pack. I'm probably going to stick with KeyPass XC as my main one, but again, it's nice to know that you've got choices. It's nice to know you've got options. If you are a GTK diehard, then perhaps the uh, known password safe is uh, is one that you would prefer both of them are really quite good so i'm certainly not going to uh, uh certainly not going to complain there uh, i've got stunt rally i've also got open ttd um i've got caden live there as well i use the flat pack version of caden live uh that seems to be one that works just on any distribution you, you name any distribution uh and you um that you can run flat packs on you can get caden live on so that is really quite useful for me it's just nice to be able to uh, to, be, to to have that reliable a workflow, um, and do I have Super Tux Cart there as well? I don't see. Yes, it is Super Tux Cart. Nice. So as you can see, I've got quite a few. Oh, and Abbey Word there as well. Uh, Abbey Word is pretty awesome. Um, as if it, those of you that were watching me on Tex's uh, X Penguin podcast will know, we had a bit of a chat about Abbey Word. And uh, yeah, like if you're not looking for a if you're if you're looking for a word processor that uh, is not particularly advanced. You want just the basic uh, word processor here. 
you know. Hello. I'm Chris. Would help if I could spell my name correctly and punctuate a sentence correctly. But there we go. And so it's just a very basic flat pack version of Abbey Word. There we go. I'm not entirely sure why Abbey Word has its own format while it, you know why doesn't it use something existing but other than that yeah so if you're looking for uh, for a very simple uh text editor then yeah abby was abby was pretty good for that kind of thing um but yeah so that's uh those are my flat packs and uh those are my neofetch statistics as well so that's all pretty good and i'd like the terminal i like the terminal color scheme that i've got there i think i customized that but i'm not 100 percent certain uh, as co uh, of course, I've got the Firefox browser. That is my main browser of choice. And of course, as with any time I show a browser on this channel these days, I've got to show my NeoCities website. Uh, it's basically, it links out to all of my social media, which is quite useful. It also provides links to useful apps and interesting websites. So if you uh, are in need of maybe a game here or two, or a good Linux app, if you don't, you know, if you're looking for an app, to uh, to f to fix a, uh, a, a to fix f f f to fulfill a role, I guess. Uh, then um, then maybe you might find it right here. I've got a few web apps that are closed source, but everything else I believe is open source. There, nice little website. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm using uh, just the basic Firefox now. As you can see, I don't have all my little plugins and add-ons and, and favorites and all that kind of thing. This is just the browser that I'm using for. Uh, today's video, but it's, uh, it's it's to me it's one that just does the job. It's nice, it's free, it's open source, and it's an alternative to Google. Uh, I have been um, tempted with some of the other browsers, the GNOME web browser, uh, Falcon as well, two other browsers there, uh, and I think there's Qt browser as well, which I have I think I've used once or twice. Um, but yeah, like Firefox is just the one that comes with every distribution that I find particularly reliable. Um, so I do tend to stick with that one for for now. Um, also, so here we go. We've got the um, channels and that kind of stuff. And also, I've got the applications website. The applications website for FlatHub. So FlatHub is the de facto default store for uh, Flatpak uh, files. Uh, and I often just like to browse through it from time to time just to see if there's anything new, anything exciting. Um, so you got uh, Avid Mux here. You got authentic. So you got two-factor authentication here on um, FlatHub. That's pretty useful. I might give that one a try sometime. Uh, you got the Fedora Media Writer. So that's pretty. Oh, Fedora Media Writer. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else have we got here? So there's a lot going on. You have got Audacity here, uh, Astro Menace, Armageddon, Desktop Wallet, Wallet for Arc, Chess X. Oh, you can see me fail at chess if you wanted to. So there's a lot. Uh, oh, and uh, a multimedia file converter. That's pretty cool. So um, yeah, I often quite like to have a look at the uh, the Flat Hub store just uh, because there are plenty of great things, uh, plenty of great finds on this particular uh, app store, and um, and it's all going to be available for your distribution. You don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to come in the right deb or RPM format, or whether or not you'll find it in the AUR, and whether or not the version in the AUR will be up to date. You've got something that's really quite straightforward here. And the games, is, you know, there's not an insignificant number of games out here. And, um, and some of them are really worth a look as well. So um, definitely worth checking out, regardless of uh, of whatever your budget might be. Uh, Zenotic, um Definitely, uh, definitely one to, uh, to check out. I've checked that uh, this game out on this channel before. In fact, a number of the games that I found in the Open Source Gaming Week I found through the Flatpak store. Uh, it was, um, you know, when when you sort of recommend a game, I suppose it makes sense in that regard to make sure that uh, most people can uh, can can get it working. So if we go into my favourites menu of the XFCE. Uh, menu here. Uh, so we've already gone through my browser of choice, Firefox. We've got through, gone through the terminal emulator. This is the XFCE4 terminal uh, emulator. But to be honest, I use whatever one just comes with the distribution. Most of them are really quite nice. The XFCE one is nice, quick, it's responsive, it always does the job. So it's uh, pretty good from that point of view. Thunar, another great file manager, but it is quite easy to switch out if that is not your kind of thing. But yeah, Thunar works nicely. It works as the uh, more traditional uh, file managers do. Uh, we've got Pamac for the 
uh, adding and removal of programs using a GUI. This is great. It's really straightforward to use. If you can use Synaptic on the Ubuntu-based distributions, then you can use this. Uh, I do tend to drop towards the command line when it comes to installing, searching for new packages, that kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, I do tend to browse the uh, Flat Hub website. But um, yeah, this works. This completely does the job if this is your preferred workflow and you prefer to stay off the command line here. It's really quite good, responsive, does the job, yeah, uh, pretty wonderfully there. So, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of offline um, password management, um, and this I tend to use KeyPass databases to do so. Now, there is, of course, with the flat packs that I showed you earlier, uh, GNOME password safe, which is the GTK version uh, equivalent of this, and this is also a uh, flat pack build. Um, and it uses the same kind of uh, KeyPass database. So if I save a database in KeyPass XC here, I can open it in the password, the, the known password safe. So I can decide from system to system or just from day to day which pack package, ma uh, which password manager rather tool I use. I just to I just tend to go with KeyPass XC. I used to use KeyPass X, and uh, this is the community build that's a bit more up to date with a bit more, you know, with a few more newer features. Um, but yeah, uh, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily blend in with the GTK themes as well as it could do. That's just the nature of the Flatpak build itself. Uh, if I installed KeyPass XC from the Manjaro native repositories, it would uh, blend in with the theme a lot better. But to be honest, I don't care enough to actually switch out my uh, KeyPass XC uh, Flatpak installation. Uh, we do, of course, have Steam. I won't load that up now, um, but uh, you guys all know what Steam looks like. I've got a screenshot utility, of course, for screenshot Sundays. Um, I've got OBS. In fact, if we go over to multimedia, you will notice that I've got two versions of OBS. I've got the OBS Flatpak and I've got the OBS, which is standard with the distribution here. And uh, this goes back to my point about the importance of being able to choose the origins of your software as well as what the end user gets as well. Because, for example, uh, one of these versions of OBS, the Flatpak version, has been packaged by the OBS maintainers, whereas the OBS that is included in the distribution repositories is maintained by the Manjaro distribution maintainers. So... Uh, it's you've got the package you've got you've basically got a package packaged by two different groups of people and that is um, quite useful in that regard because one will be necessary you know one will be more directly from the developers the other will be from the distribution and sometimes some software is best uh, acquired through you know one ver one over the other. Uh, so what else have we got here? So back up into favorites. We can also go into Reese. Oh, and Caden Live. I've got Caden Live. I've got the flat pack there. I use the app image a lot of the time as well, simply because you just don't get regressions when you use the app image. Um, but the version that also works with Manjaro also works pretty well uh, in general. Um, so what have we got here? We've got password safe. Um, we've got Abby Word as well. Now, uh, for those of you that know, I was recently on the X Penguin podcast. And if I can rem remember, I'll try and put a link in the description down below. That's Hex DSL's podcast. Wonderful podcast. And I eventually got on as a guest. And we talked about Abby Word here. And I don't use Abby Word that much. I am a LibreOffice kind of person. Uh, it's it works for me in, in all the cases, but I do some pretty, um, you know, I do like secretarial work, reports, minutes, all that kind of stuff. So I do tend to use the more advanced features of LibreOffice, but a lot of people uh, tend to prefer the more scaled down, straightforward, basic word processor. Abbey Word's really good for this. Again, also available as a flat pack. So there's all that, but yeah. Um, and I quite like Abbey Word as well. So that's pretty uh, pretty wonderful there. What else have we got in the recently used? Uh, of course, there's Caden Live. There's the password save. Simple screen recorder, which is what I'm using to record this particular video. And I'm uh, using that from the native Manjaro repositories. Uh, I set a new desktop background, background as well. Um, mouse pad and... Oh, recipes as well. Gnome recipes. Wonderful little application available uh, in the Flat Hub store as well as a flat pack. Um, and it's full of great recipes and... Um, yeah, worth a look if you ask me, which is pretty good. Um, so this is, uh, what have we got here? Uh, so it's Gnome Recipes. Gnome loves to cook, learn more about recipes, etc. So that's pretty good, worth checking out at the uh, at the Flat Hub store. Uh, also down there as well, I've got Sync Thing in the bottom right-hand corner there. I'm not going to uh, pull it up now because it's probably got some personal uh, connections on there. But if you are looking for an application that can sync files across, for example, your desktop, to your laptop, to your phone, SyncThing is wonderful. You can get SyncThing GTK 
as a flat, you can get everything as a flat pack these days. So if we search for sync thing GTK as a flat pack, this is what it looks like. Uh, and that's the uh, install commands. Uh, th this is absolutely wonderful. So you set up sync thing on uh, your laptop, your desktop, your phone. And uh, what I what I had uh, set up, which is my go to note taking um, workflow was to have sync thing on my mobile phone, my laptop and my desktop and just have one um, uh, one folder that was shared for the purposes of three way syncing all my devices. And and I had a text plain text document on that uh, in that folder. And that was like my dynamic note taking app where everything synced up the way that it should do. And it was absolutely wonderful. I didn't have to pay a fee or anything like that. It was just um, uh, it was it was really a it was, it was a good good workflow and the only reason I ended up stopping it was because I don't use my uh, my smartphone so much anymore but I keep these two my laptop and my desktop synced with sync thing GTK and um, I'm going to be on the lookout for more uses for it because it's really quite good uh, I think the standard version the 18 O4 version of Ubuntu comes with the command line version of GTK and it opens it up in a browser window which which works. Um, almost as good but you can always then just pop on the um the flat pack if you want to have the full gui experience for sync thing gtk but yeah definitely worth checking out because uh if you want to uh, make sure that two salt folders on two different computers are synced up then um what i have done with it as well actually another interesting thing i've done with sync thing gtk is that my folder full of uh, app images is actually synced across so i've got a certain set of, of app images certain set of applications that are installed on every computer all simultaneously which is something that is also pretty darn cool so i think other than that i can do a quick scan through um i think most of what you'll see here is uh broadly what you would expect uh stunt rally that's a game available as a flat pack also reviewed on this channel definitely worth a look i got super tux cut there of course LibreOffice draw uh, I've got the GNU. In fact, I think this might actually be the version from Manjaro, um, the GIMP or the GNU image manipulation program, simply because it was installed out of the box from this, so I didn't bother to pull down a, a flat pack. Uh, I This is what I use to create all my thumbnails, all that kind of stuff, so I, I'm actually a big fan of the GIMP. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to prefer Krita these days because it's more like Photoshop and it's, uh, it's a bit fancier, but when it comes to basic stuff, that's it. Liferia is my RSS reader of choice now these days, uh, very simply because it's just the one that works best with GTK environments. I quite like RSS Guard as well. I've got that installed as a flat pack. Um, and also I do have Skype for when I have to do meetings and I do have Discord as well for when I have to do video chats um, using that as well because you can't do video chats through the website yet as far as I can rem remember. Maybe they've changed that. Uh, VLC Media Player is what comes with the Manjaro XFCE, uh, but I have kept it on there just because it's nice to have a backup, I guess, in case one uh, one falls down on you. But I think there's... Uh, and Oh yeah, I've got um, GYDL. Uh, this is a GUI version of the YouTube DL command line application. So if you want to download a video from YouTube or you want to download the audio, uh, then you can uh, you can do so. So that's pretty cool as well. That's available in the Flat Hub store as a flat pack, of course. OK, folks, so I think that's about it from me today. I'm just going to wrap up with a little bit of an update. Thank you to those of you that sent some ever so kind messages after my last video. Um, I'm going to probably do another video talking a little bit about that and uh, just sharing some thoughts about the future of this channel. I've got a lot of new and exciting ideas, but there is something you guys are probably should be aware of. I've been doing a lot of streaming lately over on Twitch. So if you don't already, uh, it's probably worth following me twitch.tv forward slash Chris where there's usually links in the description. If not, there will certainly be on the channel page. Um, however, a lot of you guys aren't too fond of Twitch, uh, but there are also a lot of people that aren't too fond of uh, video game streams and so forth on this channel as well. So what I've decided to do is everything gaming I've decided to move to a whole new channel called Gaming with Werewolves. Some of you guys wanted more punny names, so uh, this one's on me. Uh, it's basically a channel that is going to mirror the Twitch channel, so I've got um, an archive of old live streams there, and I'll be mirroring 
Um, hopefully I'll be mirroring Twitch live streams over on that channel as well. So if you don't want to watch the live streams over on chat, over on Twitch, sometimes, for example, the, the performance isn't wonderful or anything like that, then uh, subscribe to Gaming with Werewolves and you should be able to uh, to watch live streams from that um, instead. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to be wi uh, doing fewer gaming live streams on this channel, Chris Ware Digital, uh, simply because it's uh, that was really the big... Uh, um, divide where opinion happened to be was you know all the other videos that i make versus uh gaming live stream videos so i thought well you know let's do the gaming live stream videos on twitch and for those of the people who don't like twitch and there are perfectly valid reasons for that i've talked uh, i've been very critical of twitch as a company um on this channel before um and for those of you that that just don't you know outright don't want to use t uh, twitch then check out gaming with, with werewolves it's a brand new channel and um and I'm just going to do gaming stuff entirely on that. I'll do the occasional, uh, you know, like uh, review type game. But when it comes to the long form stuff um, and some of the game stuff that we do live, I'm just going to do gaming with werewolves. So I'm going to set it up as its, uh, its thing on its own. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. But uh, let me know your thoughts, of course, down in the comment section below. And relative links will be down in the description. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.